Well, hey, welcome. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Oh, lots of people on. Um, welcome to tier three. I've got my tea, and just like I said, this is the first tea at three, not live from my kitchen, uh, because it's 30 minutes today, so I'm having my tea, and I thought I'd have to sit down and do this one. I'm normally on my feet in my kitchen, um, but I'm not. So welcome to another part of, um, I'm just in the West Wing today, um, so that's all very good. Hope we're all right. There's lots of people there. Um, I've got some I've got some biscuits, obviously, so I've got a Jaffa cake, because they're, they're quite traditional. Um, I've also got a fig roll. I've snuck a fig roll in as well. So I've got a few biscuits to get me through. Um, and Crofty's back, which is good. Carly's on. That's all lovely. Um, if you want to say hi, that's great. I'm going to try and get you to type in some answers. So let me know you're there. Um, so that'd be nice. Hey, Sam's in. Good. Um, that's all grand. Um, so we're going to talk about resilience today. Uh, Helen's in. Lovely to see you. Afternoon, Helen. Um, I, I like the way you're, you're utilising every every letter in that afternoon, everybody. That's good. I've got a question as well, um, which is obviously the most exciting part, really. Um, I thought because this is like 30 minutes, this is like, so I thought I could do about 10 questions. We could just do a quiz, maybe. Um, but I thought uh, it's like a film. It feels like a film. So my question today is who are the highest earning film stars of 2019. And I want the male, the highest earning male and the highest earning female. 2019, highest earning film stars, 2019, male and female. Um, if you want to go for it, you can guess the salary that they earn as well. But highest earning film stars, that's um, that's my question today. Um, is, is that your answer, Clara, or who I look like? Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> Wolverine, that's Hugh Jackman. That's Hugh Jackman, I think, Crofty. Probably. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit. I'll give you a little bit longer to think about it, Clara, clearly. Um, right, we're going to do some resilience. So, resilience, because it's a proper hot word. Um, I did like a little 10 minutes on resilience way back when. Um, yeah, Hugh Jackman, it's wrong, Crofty. Um, so way back when. So we're going to talk about resilience. But I thought I'd try and, you know, because we're going to do 30 minutes, sort of kind of see um, what, what we think about it. What's it all about? And so because it is a bit of a buzzword and, I've, I, you know, I, I perhaps work in an industry where there's quite a lot of buzzwords. That's a good guess, Sam. I think he's top three, actually. Um, but it's not right. Um, so my question and if, if you want to stop typing names of film stars, but I like the way we've all gone for the, the men first as well. Um, it's called Chaplin. I'm so old. I remember him being in Chaplin. Um, my first question to you is, is what, what do you, when I say what's resilience, what do you think? Just type in an answer and then I can have a Jaffa cake. So what do you think resilience is? If you're not going to talk to me, it's going to be quite dull. But what do we think? Of? Mental toughness, all right, Clara, that's good. Yeah, coping, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> I like that ability to ride a storm. Actually, I think when I first started training a variety of things, we always used to say, "Oh, what you've got to be able to do is, you know, you've either got to climb over the barrier, go round the barrier, go under the barrier." Um, ability to recover from difficult situations is fair enough. And I think what happens now is you've just got to ride the storm. So imagine if you're whitewater rafting. If I go back maybe five, ten years, I'd say, do you know what? When you see the when you see all the difficult water coming up ahead, the best thing to do is get out of the water. So get the raft out, go down the towpath and put it back in. Or, um, you know, maybe put a power board on the back of the boat so you can, you know, race through it. And, and that's what we used to train. And now it's become apparent that, that those aren't options. The only option is to hold on tight. So we now have to ride that storm. Um, you hear phrases like bounce back ability and stuff like that. I've got a definition, actually. Um, so I better put that up. Ability to cope with and bounce back with difficult. That, that, feel, <laughs> that That's very good, Justina. I'm very impressed. Um, the ability to bounce, it's almost like it's come off my slide there. The ability to bounce back and bounce forward from adversity. Necessary skill for coping with life's inevitable ob obstacles and one of the key ingredients to success. And I think that's that's fair enough. That's that's what we're talking about. 
um, with resilience? How, how do we carry on? Um, I kind of think people have been resilient forever. I think loads of people have been resilient. I think, you know, my parents must have been pretty resilient. Um, you know, my old man was born in like um, 1930. So he would have been fairly resilient. You know, his teenage years would have been spent post-war. So he must have been quite resilient. So what I try and do is just kind of break it down a little bit and think, oh, what, what is that? Because everyone listening, all the people listening, you must you must have been through a tough situation. You know, you, you, you won't have got through this bit of your life without thinking. It's also about maintaining a positive approach. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's about thinking about what's around the corner. And that can be a whole host of things, you know um around um what's happening next um what's the what's the next good thing that can happen um because there's always you know there's always something that's not great happening um but then it's then it's what we do to overcome that and so we've got a lot of tools that we can feel um that we can use so what i want you to think about is you know think about a scenario where perhaps you you did feel like things weren't going right that kind of thing. How how did you feel, whether that's physically or emotionally? Just type some of those words in because I've got a lot of Jaffa to eat. So so how did you feel in those tough times? So that might be something personal, that might be something professional, but how do those tough times make you feel? Any words you want to type in? Okay, upset. We up. I was always first off the bat, which I like. Oh, okay. Wow, I'm going to have to get over this quick, and I, um, like, like I've maybe failed. Um, a real sense of unfairness. Yeah, and no, I think that's a that's a bit of a classic because I think sometimes we're in a tough situation um, that that we sometimes feel it's aimed very personally at, at, at me. I, I, so I feel like I have that inability to take it out of the scenario and just say this is I'm the only person this is happening to. Um, OK, so we've got things like um, difficult to sleep as well. So it can affect us in, in a lot of ways like that. And of course, one, one of the things when we talk about resilience, we will say good thing to build up your resilience is sleep. And of course, the, the difficult thing is the difficult situation is stopping me from doing one of the things. So uh, that's kind of a bit of a paradox of, of how do I be resilient? um heavy and that's heavy i i think that 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 weight that that you feel that is that's not a real physical weight but what well, it is for me i guess but that that weight that you might feel um, it kind of drags you down and stops you doing a lot of things so performing functioning well professionally but also it kind of stops you performing and um, personally, overly effectively, like you have that real, I, I can't, I can't be bothered. I, I kind of don't want to do it, and um, that can lead to frustration. That can lead to frustration personally, and professionally as well. Um, frightened and uncertain, yeah, because you don't know what is around the corner. And um, although I mentioned like my old man and everything, born in 1930 and all that, um, I don't want to hark back and go, oh well, we, you know, they had it miles tougher or anything like that. It, it's not about a competition. And it's not about comparisons because we all have different tools. We all have different um, environments that we're working in. I think resilience was always there. And what we're trying to do is just bring forward to the forefront of our minds what we've got available now in 2020. It doesn't matter what my dear old dad used and how he did it. But resilience was always there. We're now just breaking it down. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's an answer to the question and not just your coping mechanism Matt. but I, I don't know I could I could be wrong um, so in those scenarios where you've kind of put up there I'm upset failed difficult to sleep frightened and uncertain all of those things what so what did you do to help you through those times because I'll, I'll obviously give you some of the things that I think work but but what kind of things um, did you do in the past that you think helps you. Okay, talk to other people. Yep, Zoe, that's a goodie. Big rolls now. Okay, good things to look forward to. Okay, so we're going to have a positive lift. A friend of mine always had a holiday booked. <laughs> I might be scuppered at the moment, but always always try and have a holiday booked. Um, that's quite a big thing. Yeah, top notch, Mr. Trunley. Um, 
focus on the things you can control. This this will have been emphasised in um, in a host of training that, that a lot of you guys will have attended. But the circle of influence and, and circle of concern is, is a, just a tremendous tool. Um, we spend so much time worrying about things we can't worry about. Um, that's where social media is a brilliant tool, and it can also bring you right down. Um, but circle of influence, circle of concern, and um, and, I, and I've used that a lot. You know, I, I know I told a story. I was, um, I'll tell it here. There's probably a few people on here who heard my story. Um, but my dad, who I, who I do kind of look back on and um, kind of wish he was still about sometimes, you know. Um, but but he was he was close to like losing his job, and he was really he was really concerned. Um, but of course, he couldn't impact that. The only thing he could impact on was whether we left or whether we stayed. And um, so one night he sat up right in bed and he just went, oh, I'm just going to leave, get another job. That was that. Because that was the thing you can control. Um, and, and I think that kind of works. But control the things you can control. And the other stuff, it's just going to happen. Um, running. Um, yeah, fair enough. And, and of course, you know, I know there's a few people on um, from my business today. And it's great to see what all you guys did exactly one year ago today um running running that 10k but but you know right, certainly exercise is something out there that's going to help candy blessing i don't know does anybody else have a little pot of good things um this is this is quite a nice little thing you know you just get like a little um i'm sure i should be doing this in a better order but you know you know me just write a note to yourself just good thing that's happened to you pop it in a jar of good things and then when you're having a bad day or maybe once a month empty your jar of good things those good things happen. And then when you read them all and you just smile and you might smile 30 times. So it's great. Um, so don't really count them, but but kind of physically remind yourself what they are. Oh, that's good. That's good, sir. No section on your phone for that. Yeah. I've got a smile file on my on my um, inbox. Um, you know, if, if ever I get a nice email, I put it in there. And if ever I'm having a bad day or I just feel a bit low, I just read my smile file and it makes me feel good. So, you know, note section on the phone, anywhere like that. Can you blessings? Um, yeah, we've done that. One. I'll show my flexibility and can do attitude to my management. Okay, yeah. So, the kind of that that comes a little bit in there as well with that a little circle of concern. What can I do? So, let me think about it's it's, it's much better if I go home with a can do and a positive um, kind of vibe about how I'm going to approach work because that is the one thing I am in control of. You know, I, I can I can get up and you know if I want to be upset, I can pretty much upset myself quickly. You know, it's it's kind of one of those challenges. And um, for me, you know, um, this is like my office. This is where I'm working. And um, I've, I've I've said to a few people, you know, but Mondays are the, Monday is the day that I find harder. You know, I kind of do the week, weekend, try and do some fun things, something along those lines. And then Monday I wake up and I go, oh yeah, we're back again, aren't we? So what what I try and do, I just try and give myself something different to do first thing in the morning. And it could be as simple as make a better coffee on a Monday, but just try and do something like that. I appreciate the little things in life. If one thing that has generated um, out of lockdown, it, it's that, I think. I think I think we uh, appreciate the smaller things in life, which I think is, is um, really important. Um, and I've said this before, um, but the, a friend of mine works at the British School, the head team, he always starts look at the sky. Um, I, I don't know if I broke there. I just had a message. He always says, look at the sky. And he starts a lot of video messages just looking at the sky. And um, I really quite like that. But, you know, certainly, you know, you've probably seen plants grow. We've seen plants flower. Uh, we've seen trees, leaves drop, the different colours. I think it's, um, you know, that kind of thing is really helpful. All right. Good. Um, that's a nice start. Nice chat box there as well, which is good. So I'm going to think some of the things. Um, I've kind of come up with some things like about physically, um, how can we be more resilient? Emotionally, how we can we be more resilient? Resilient, sorry. And then mentally, how we can be more resilient. Then my kind of areas to work on. And um, so physical resilience. Um, some of the things that we can do. Um, some have already been spoken about. But, you know, we've got to keep active. You know, Matt's, Matt's tip on running, absolutely 100%. But you don't all have to run. We can't all go out running. We can't all couch the 5K. I managed about couch the 3K. That was me done. Um, but we can still go out and we can be active. 
we can get up, we can go for a walk first thing. Uh, like I've always said, you know, I used to walk to the station. Well, now, of course, I can just go for a walk and then come back and start my day's work. And that is what I try and do on a Monday. Um, water, I know it's tier three, but it can be water at three as well. So make sure we're keeping hydrated. The, the, the other thing in there physically I mentioned was about sleep, and that's come up as I can't sleep. So when I feel under pressure, um, I need to build my resilience, and it's good for me, but that's one of the things I can't do. How can I do it? One of the things that's helped me in, in, in times like this is um, I do have the notepad by the side of my bed, and I kind of write the things down that, that bother me, or sometimes I write stuff down when I wake up in the middle of the night. I write things down to try and clear my head, to clear my mind, uh, and that can sometimes help. I think about um, if you if you are struggling to sleep, make sure your phone is nowhere near you. Try and try and go completely um, connection free for the hour before you go to bed. Maybe listen to some music to help you get to sleep. Those are the kind of things that can help. Um, less tea and coffee. Tea at three. It's fully allowed. Totally allowed. Um, obviously, we know about stuff like smoking and stuff like that, but get out in the air. And um, make sure you're moving regularly because we are all, you know, probably in office space at home and things like that. Make sure you're standing up. Um, then uh, one of our colleagues, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you all know I'm talking about, but he always is standing up um, whenever there's meetings. Um, so you can do that. And we're actually talking about doing that at work as well, just having stand up meetings, walking meetings. So actually arrange a meeting where you just have your headphones in and two actually outside. Um, so you don't need to, obviously you can't carry your laptop about, but I think that's a good thing. And it's just put the car map is, is brilliant. There's loads of mindfulness things out there and that they will help that. I mean, that's going to help your mental resilience, but you know, certainly not knocking calm. If you've got any more apps, if anybody's got apps on their own that they think help them with mindfulness and positive thinking, um, inspirational quotes, put them in the chat and share those with people. I think that's good. Um, so don't be afraid to just pump those in. Um, emotionally, um, what can we do to control our emotions? Well, what happens is our brain, our brain's a hugely complex thing. I, you know, I, I'm not going to break it down that much in the time that we've got. But that emotional hijack can happen and emotions can take us over. Now, some emotions are good for us to display and some are less good for us. So things like road rage, um, that's not a great emotion to show. We kind of believe it is. It, it's, oh, it's better out than in, but it's not good. An emotion like grief, though, is a good emotion to show. Anger is less of a good one. So you have different, um, you, you have a kind of a grid. I'm in training, so everything's in a grid, isn't it? So it can be like high energy um, and it can be high pleasant. And that would be like excitement, joy, something like that. But it could be low energy and pleasant, which is like calmness. Um, equally, you could have a, a highly unpleasant, um, which would be the anger and fear and high energy. And then the lower, uh, but still unpleasant, low energy, but unpleasant would be that sad grief. And it's about, OK, so 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 where do I spend most of my time? And it's almost like analyze yourself. We, we're good at analyzing ourselves for outputs but we're less good at analysing ourselves in moods and emotions and, and what impacts us on us. Now, if, if things do impact on you, you've got to say, well, can I, can I remove it? What can I do to remove those things? Um, you know, lots of people over, over this whole period of time have been talking about, oh, you know, every time I go on social media, every time I read the news app, it's like, here's my top tip. Don't go on it. 27 times a day just seeing those uh, mindfulness and yoga practice are good for calming down they are just you know turn everything off just for a minute little power nap on the sofa i don't i don't think that's a problem at all and that's exactly what we want emotionally what else can we do we can listen to good music 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 um of course ironically we all turn to the arts in in times of trouble and um the arts are seriously struggling so the show must go on everybody um but Times of trouble, so a bit of music. Alexa's good to talk to. She tells some good jokes. Uh, <laughs> there, there's so many jokes that could come out of that, Matt, uh, <laughs> that, that are not suitable for a live YouTube. Um, <laughs> I'm your friend. Uh, but music, and, and they help you in so many things because they can help you in the timing of your day, uh, help you sing along, they evoke positive memories. So make sure you play some good music. You can reward yourself 
put a figure on. Uh, so you can reward yourself for doing things. I think that will help you get over things. Um, think about where you are and um, what you're looking at. So I don't have anything behind me at the moment. I've got to put something up. I've just moved into this room. Um, but I have some happy things in front of me. So I kind of evoke memories, images, stuff like that. One of the reasons I wanted to move into this room was I was spending too much time in the same room almost. So I kind of thought, this can be my workplace and then I can move. I can take time out somewhere else. Um, friends is great. It came up on the chat. It's absolutely brilliant. Of course we want friends. And we want to tell people what we don't need, always need to do is tell everybody. So, so have that tight network of friends that you can that you can utilize. That doesn't mean we have to tell four million people, um, because that can be quite wearing as well, emotionally. Good. Um, mental resilience. The biggest one is influence and concern, which has come up early doors. Um, things in your brain recognize what your brain is doing to you. Recognize what your brain says. Recognize that little voice, that little person on your shoulder. Acknowledge it. So, okay, I'm aware this is what my brain's telling me. This is this is what it's headlining up. And then I can change. But you have to acknowledge it and know that it's not the right thing. It's not the thing. It's not it's not where I want to be. Um, but that's without doubt one of the things we want to do. So recognize, acknowledge, and change mentally to just be that little bit stronger. Um, now... Something I was I was reading about, which was um, without resilience. I'm just flicking through a slide of some slides because uh, because of something that I found out that was um, really quite interesting, and that was about multitasking. And um, I think what happens is um, when we're busy in these times, we try and multitask, and um, and multitasking is like proven as not being good. Um, so I'm just going to read this because I don't want to get it wrong, so it's on my other screen, but. Um, Participants who multitask during cognitive tasks, so brain tasks, their IQ score declines similar to if they'd have been smoking marijuana or stayed up without sleep for the night. Um, IQ drops of multitask, multitasking men lowered their scores to that of an eight-year-old child. Um, so multitasking, not a great thing. Um, I, I don't know where they found a multitasking man, to be fair, but um, they certainly apparently did. Um, people believe that they multitask and can do it effectively, but it tends to slow things down. We know it slows things down because if we over multitask online, we see our system slowing down. So we know it slows down because a computer slows down when it's trying to multitask because it's got so many things open. Why we think we can cheat it and be better is quite interesting. So I want to try and multitask to sort of that less and less, one thing at a time. If you're the kind of person that tries to open a file and it says you've already got a copy of this open, do you want to open another one that we've clearly got caught up multitasking? If you've got numbers, like it's got, you know, five Microsoft Word opens, you've probably got too many open. Um, you know, just one thing at a time. If you want to do a piece of work, turn off your email. Turn off your email, close it down completely and get that there. And, and regular breaks. Uh, if, if anything has come out of um, the lockdown and the fact that so many people are working at home, I think we are a lot more comfortable now taking breaks. And I think that can only be good. Um, so what else have we got? Well, firstly, I think to prove our resilience, you have to recognise that there's a struggle. <laughs> um, and, and I do think that's important. Um, that people talk about, oh, you know, fighting a war and all that, and and I'm not, and I don't, I don't always um, kind of sign up to that kind of stuff. But I think if we can just say, do you know what? Yeah, that these these are quite tough times. You know, what's it, what, what's we're experiencing? But then once you come out the back of that, I think you can appreciate it even more. If you just kind of go, hey, it's just life. It's just what it throws at me. I think you're on, you're undermining what you're currently doing and achieving, which I think is important. Um, take some time out for yourself each time. Maybe, you know, just jot down, what are you good at? What what are your five key strengths? And this is terribly non-British to write down something like, what are my five key strengths? What are five things I'm really good at? But I think, I think that helps. And then you kind of think about, and how can I use these skills in these tough times? Um, 
recognize that you're probably not the only person who's kind of feeling some of those things that you might might be feeling um that that's that's that 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 part of you know join up hook up with somebody who's going to be able to help you and um i think that will always give you that benefit and um i've just got a couple more things um one of which it says about positive thinking and and i think that this always comes up you know how do you how do you think positively i think we do have to go back and we have to write those things down i think you have to write the things down that you know what, what where was i last year what was i doing last year now even in this if i if i spring forward from last october to now maybe the skills that i've utilized anything like that and so so just as we come towards kind of the close of this what i'd like people to type in the chat box is um what what's the one two three things that you're proud of that you've done in lockdown in the last six months what are the things that you're really chuffed with that you've done in the last six months um and that way they'll always be there for you to come back and look at this and say hey do you know what on that day i've done really well so things that you've improved you've done well you didn't know you could do survive living with your parents it's funny because i was speaking to them and they they typed in survive living with their daughter so uh, that's uh, that's fair enough so <laughs> anything else um, other than living with those parents. Any, but what, what have you done? Don't be shy, people of Britain. Type in what you have achieved over the last six months. Kept up with exercising. Good for you, Clara. And you know what? I think because <laughs> <laughs> I see that and hold my beer on it. Um, Bill, maintain more regular social connections, albeit virtually, but that's good. Um, eating a lot healthier. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree there. You know, I think... Um, I think I've spent more time in the vegetable aisle in my supermarket than I ever used to. Um, so that's good. That's good. What about professionally? <laughs> what if we, I'm going to be finding good things out of Trumley, not eat or not. Um, what, what have you done professionally? All of those things are great and they're all personal. I don't know. But what about professionally? And anyway, agree with the exercise, a lot of distance goals. Good, Helen. What have you learned about yourself professionally? Where do you think your strengths lie now? Came together as a team. We knew we had to work hard to stay connected. Okay. So probably built stronger bonds at work. That's um, very good. Very, very first proposal. Okay. And don't lose sight of that. You know, that's good. So that's that's always a good question for people. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Um, and that helps those people if you want to do anything about positive, keeping things in perspective. What have I achieved? Um, find your strengths. Keep working at them. Write stuff down. Honestly, keep yourself a little book. I'm much more productive in the afternoon than morning, opposite in the off. Oh, okay, that's fair enough. And, and if you know, I mean, it's a good time management tip as well. More skills as a coordinator, which I did not have the chance to try before. And I think then that gives you the, the, the confidence to advertise those, advertise those for want of a better world word. You know, these were skills that I hadn't had the chance to display, but I wanted to learn and display and show those. So I don't think we should ever lose sight of the things that, that we've achieved in six months. Resilience is, is one of those words that, that kind of conjures up a whole host of things. It's, it's, it's getting on with stuff and having the ability to look back. There is always something around the corner. Um, now, we can be chasing pots of gold, but we do tend to know that there's always good things just around the corner. We can find good things. You know, those simple things, just the leaves changing colour. Still not Rebel Wilson, no. Leaves changing colour, looking at the sky. Don't be afraid to do things. Matt's gone in with the last guess. Um, now, I've got two questions for you. Keep guessing. But we've done 38 tier threes, just because I've got quite a few people online today, which is lovely. Um, I was thinking, oh, what shall I do for my next topic? And I was really thinking, wow, I've done a lot of topics personal development, attending governance. Oh, this is good. Excellent. Love that stuff. Well, like, is there anything next week, next Tuesday, what would you like me to talk about? Type in anything you want to hear me talk about. Um, put that in now. Um, and otherwise, we're really going to struggle. I'm really hoping someone's going to come up with something. What shall I talk about next Tuesday? Type in the topic you want to know about. And um, also type in who are those high-earning film stars? Who are those high-earning film stars? Nobody's going right at the moment. Um, just to let you know, the highest-earning male film star, the Encounter Cook story, honestly, that'll be a, 
That would be longer than uh, 15 minutes, let me tell you. Highest earning male film star tragically earned just over 80 million. And the higher, highest earning, uh, it's not Nicole Kidman, good guess, Helen. Highest earning female, um, and just under such a shy of 60 million. Uh, but maybe that's a whole other episode that we need to discuss. The top two. Highest earning male, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, was the highest earning film star. And in fact, for the second consecutive year. Um, and the highest earning female film star, movie star from last year, Scarlett Johansson. So there we go. Every day's a learning day. I didn't know those things. No topics come up. I'm definitely not doing the Ian Caldicourt story. You'll have to have a little look at our YouTube channel. We will get it out. Girl Crush. Um, <laughs> that's that's a thought that I'm going to end on without doubt. Um, I see what you mean there. I thought I was your Girl Crush, but I just realised that Scarlett Johansson. Devastated. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I've got Clara thinking I was uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> don't, don't do those laughing faces, Angie. That's not helping at all. Um, I'm gutted. We'll be coming up with something, and we're going to push it out on the uh, YouTube channel, what I'm going to talk about. Look at that. 31 minutes. Thank you so much for coming. I've had a l- <laughs> love you, Angie. Um, I've had a blast, as always. Thank you for joining me in my new room. Thank you for joining my t- with me my tea. I've still got a Jaffa cake left. Have a great afternoon and I'll see you soon. Bye now.